In this mini tutorial we're going to think about some of the differences between grey matter and white matter as well as looking at some of the nomenclature relating to neuroanatomical terminology. So what we're going to do first off is we're going to start by drawing a very brief um, overview of the central nervous system as we always tend to draw. So here are the cerebral hemispheres here is the brainstem and the spinal cord. Okay. And on the left side of the screen, we're going to consider grey matter. And on the right side of the screen, we're going to consider white matter. Now, the first thing we need to think about is, is what are grey and white matter composed of? Well, grey matter um, is primarily composed of cell bodies. cell bodies of neurons, it contains dendrites, and it contains axon terminals. And it is in the grey matter that most of the processing takes place. So um, synaptic function, um, synaptic processing is taking place within the grey matter. And there are really three different um, flavours, if you like, of, of grey matter in the central nervous system. Uh, firstly, we have got um, you know, what, what, what the, the layman would think of when you use the term grey matter, and that is the cerebral cortex. So you know, Poirot used to call them the, the little grey cells, and this refers to the cerebral cortex, which forms a thin layer all the way around the surface of the cerebral hemispheres. So the first region of the CNS where we find grey matter is cerebral cortex, and of course that's very well represented in humans. The next place where we see um, grey matter is deep down in the cerebral hemispheres, and we see a whole load of discrete, um, usually bilaterally symmetrical, regions or islands of grey matter um, sitting deep down in the hemispheres and in the brainstem and these are called nuclei nuclei and the nuclei of the brain have many different functions some of them relay information going down to the cord some of them relay information going up to the cortex and some of them are involved um, in other aspects of subcortical processing. The third um, type of grey matter you are already familiar with, um, and we can appreciate that if we do a cross-section through the spinal cord, um, and these are the horns of the spinal cord. So here we're going to draw a section through the spinal cord, like this with the central canal, a dorsal horn, a ventral horn, a ventral horn, and a dorsal horn like that. But what you've got to realise actually is that the horns are three-dimensional. We're used to looking at the horns in transverse orientation, but actually the horns are three-dimensional structures running through the whole spinal cord. So if we take the ventral horn, which sits here, and which we're classically used to seeing in a transverse section, the ventral horn actually runs the full length of the spinal cord as a column of grey matter. Okay, So the ventral horn runs through the full length of the spinal cord on both sides as a three-dimensional column of grey matter. That's, and it's the same with the um, dorsal horn. So the dorsal horn isn't just a, a solitary two-dimensional structure visible in a transverse section. It runs through the length of the cord as a column of grey matter. Um, and so if we were considering, say, the uh, C5 level of the spinal cord, well, this region here, OK, would be responsible, would contain part of the grey matter which is which contains motor neurons which cause elbow flexion and which subserve the c5 dermatome 
Likewise, if we were to consider maybe the L3 spinal cord level and this region of the grey matter column here, that would contain motor neurons which cause um, knee extension and sensory neurons which deal with the L3 dermatome. So I think that's quite a, a, an important concept to realise that the dorsal and ventral horns of the spinal cord are actually one small part of a great big cell column running through the full length. Next, let's um, consider white matter. Uh, white matter is primarily composed of um, axons, as you know, and axons are always associated with some form of support cell. Um, in the peripheral nervous system, that support cell is the Schwann cell. Uh, in the central nervous system, the support cells include oligodendrocytes and um, astrocytes. And when an axon is associated with a support cell, we call it a fibre. Okay? So if you hear me using the term fibres, I'm referring to axons associated with some form of supporting cell. Now, there are three basic types of white matter in the central nervous system. The, the first type of white matter I'm going to illustrate to you by zooming in on a region of the cerebral hemisphere where we've got gyri and sulci. Okay? So if we zoomed in on this area, we would see sulci here and big gyri sticking out with sulci in between them once again. Now, those gyri okay, are connected together like this. So neighbouring gyri are connected together and we have a name for fibres which connect relatively closely neighbouring regions of the brain. These are called association fibres. So these are association fibres which are involved in connecting relatively closely related regions of the brain. And in fact um, these association fibres which I've just drawn between neighbouring gyri have a special term, they're called U-fibres um, for obvious reasons. So we've got association fibres which tend to connect structures together on, um, in the ipsilateral hemisphere. The, the second type of um, white matter connection which we have are the commissural fibres. These are commissures. These are commissures or commissural fibres. And what commissures do is they connect the two hemispheres together. All right? They connect the left and right sides of the central nervous system together. And the classic example of a commissure is the corpus callosum, which contains the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Um, but we also do have commissures in the spinal cord, which allow fibres to cross from one side to the other. So if you look now at the bottom left, um, we have actually got commissural fibres which cross over um, in the so-called ventral white commissure of the spinal cord. The third main type of white matter we find in the central ne nervous system are the so-called um, projection fibres. These are the projection fibres. And what the projection fibres do is they run longitudinally through the um, central nervous system. So they might start out, say, if we're thinking about a motor tract like the corticospinal tract, they might start out in the cortex, run down through the brain stem and go down into the spinal cord. So the projection fibres run longitudinally through the central nervous system. The um, commissures run transversely through the nervous system and the association fibres you can kind of think as running um, coronally through the central nervous system. So there are the three main types of white matter pathway found within the CNS. So what we're going to do next is we're going to consider um, some subtypes of the projection fibres. And a lot of the neuroanatomy that you're going to learn is going to be associated with projection fibres. 
So, so we'll move on now to, to, to a second um, page. Uh, and what we're going to do on this page is we, we're going to draw a cross section through the spinal cord. Um, you know, this is a generic cross section through the spinal cord. Um, it could be at any level, and the level doesn't really matter. So there's a cross section through the cord, central canal, dorsal horn, ventral horn, ventral horn, dorsal horn, like that. Um, and the first thing to note, which you're already aware of, is that the horns are grey matter, and the grey matter is surrounded by white matter. So that butterfly-shaped region of grey matter is surrounded by an outer layer of white matter. Um, this is different in the brain. Um, it's actually not reversed in the brain. All we have in the brain is a layer like in the cord, but with an additional superficial layer of grey, i.e. the cerebral cortex. So the brain is just like the cord, but with an outer layer of additional grey matter. Now, we're just going to focus on the grey... Sorry, we're just going to focus on the white matter here. And the first thing that we can actually do with the white matter is split it up um, into four major regions. So I'm going to draw some lines here to split the white matter up into four major regions. Um, so we've got um, a region here, uh, a region here, a region here, and a region here. And these regions are known as funiculi, singular funiculus. These are funiculi, okay? And they have names. So this is the dorsal funiculus. This is the ventral funiculus. And these are the lateral funiculi. All right, we have dorsal, ventral, and lateral funiculi. And what the funiculi are, are white matter containing axons both going up, both ascending and descending. So typically the funiculi contain both sensory and motor, or afferent and efferent fibres. They contain many different pathways. Now, within each funiculus, we find tracts. So, those different pathways within the funiculi, which might be afferent or efferent, we term tracts. And the tracts live in discrete places. So, for example, we have our lateral corticospinal tracts living in the lateral funiculi here. We have our, our dorsal column pathways, our dorsal column tracts, living in the dorsal funiculi here. Okay. We have our um, ventral corticospinal tracts living in the ventral funiculi here. So within the funiculi we have individual tracts. Uh, and what is a tract? Well, well, a tract is relatively simple to understand. Um, a tract is simply a connection between two areas of grey matter. Okay? So a tract is a connection between two areas of grey matter. Typically a tract sends information in only one direction. And all the fibres within a tract have a similar function. So um, a sensory tract might send information upwards, whereas a motor tract might send information downwards between two areas of grey matter. Now, within a tract, we can actually identify subdivisions. And these subdivisions within a tract, we term fasciculi. Singular fasciculus. These are fasciculi, and they can be subdivisions within a tract. The classical example of a fasciculus is found in the dorsal column pathway. And in the dorsal column pathway, we have two fasciculi within the dorsal column tract. Um, and, and those two fasciculi are known as the um, gracile fasciculus and the cuneate fasciculus. Um, you'll do more about that when you do sensory system. But all that you've got to understand at this moment is that a fasciculus uh, can be thought of as a subdivision of a tract. So that ends this brief tour of 
how we classify grey and white matter, um, and I hope that that's been of some help to you.